the EP say. is out. The EP. It's it is out, out now. now. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. We've been playing uh, Every Window is a Mirror on oh, our good. station. We love it. Can you, I want to hear from you what um, that song, you know, is about and how, what it means to you. I guess that song is, is kind of my reaction to living through 2020. Um, it was just the pandemic forced everybody to, and there's a, another song on the EP that deals with this called the inversion, but basically our digital lives like supplanted our real ones for the first time in, in human history. And I think the result of that was um, people had used social media and stuff before as a platform to yell and complain about things and spout like solutions for the entire world, 140 characters at a time. But then that became everything. And it was like anything uh, outside of yourself was like, why doesn't this person do things more like me? Or why doesn't this person believe the things that I believe? And um, failed to acknowledge that other people's experiences are inherently different than our own. We cannot ever truly understand or like walk in somebody else's shoes. It's just not possible. But the thing we can do is, accept that idea that um, yes, I'm looking out the window at the person in the street and I might have an opinion on how they're living or the things they do, but I'm still me, right? Like I'm still choosing the window that I look out of and it's not actually a clear pane of glass. Like I'm, it's tainted by my perception of things. So if everyone could acknowledge that and, and they certainly can't and won't, as we have learned, uh, I think things in general would be uh, a lot less friction. You for I am right. And everyone what's... should know it. <laughs> no, uh, sorry. That's, that's, just, you know, example. <laughs> the only thing we had to do for a year was get mad on social media. Um, mm -hmm. I started to, at one point, realize that from the like second before I got, I went to sleep. And then the second I woke up, I was reading Twitter and I started to realize after a while how toxic that was for me. So it, I was just reading everybody's mad opinions all the time and it didn't help my own head. So it's crazy. And it's not even like, I'm not even trying to like weigh in on like, like there's some good ideas out there and there's some terrible ideas out there, but also like, I can only say that at all, like inside of the experience of myself and like what I perceive. Right. And then we learned this year that there's a large group of people out there who perceive like an entirely different reality where like we can't even agree like who the president is right <laughs> now e e even though like it's pretty clear like like that's just like one of those things where like oh no we do know that one and there is and there is an answer but but there's stuff like that where it's just people it's like choose your own reality because inside of the digital world you know if, if you don't <laughs> If you don't look outside, you don't have to acknowledge it, I guess. So I do want to, I talked to you, um, it was after Possession came out, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think we really realized at the time how significant March 13th was, but now it is. You yeah. had like, I, I've been seeing bands that release albums in the last year. It was like a pandemic release, but you had the pandemic release, which is crazy. So and now we're moving on to another cycle. Like, what was that all like? Well, I, I did feel personally attacked for about like 24 hours. Like the virus had my name on it and was out <laughs> to get me. And then I quickly was able to move past that, fortunately, and realize that a lot of people were losing and were about to lose a lot more things than like people caring about the record they made. And, and it was pretty crazy that like, music in general really fought for um had to fight for like attention like what like what was the big song of last year like i have no idea like people were putting music out at a time <laughs> like this are you serious um where it was uh i had always had this thought in my brain i was a, a history major in college so it was never lost on me the fact that like what I offer to the universe or uh, the public is essentially I am a court jester. Like I'm a clown. I go up on stage and I hope that you like 
the thing that I'm doing because that's all I have. Like I don't <laughs> do anything else. I don't like actually offer anything to uh, the rest of society. Um, so I always thought like, to me, it was always when, uh, when the revolution happens, I'll be the first person to starve to death. <laughs> and um, I was wrong about just like the event, like it was pandemic. And I didn't think about, and, and I, I don't, uh, I'm fine. Uh, the expansion of uh, unemployment to like musicians and stuff for the first time ever was absolutely amazing. Like it should, it should always be like that. Um, so the, that part was good, but um, it was uh, just really, really crazy and hard to, hard to rationalize for a minute to just work so hard and you've built this thing and you've been on tour for so long and it's, it's gone. And you realize that what we do can only happen during these times of like extreme peace. Whereas as crazy as things were, I could previously get on a tour bus and go to places eight hours apart and reliably know that most people could get to the concert that, that night. Right. There wasn't like something crazy, like, uh, you know, I, I was thinking of like a war or, or something, you know, but, but, or a pandemic, like where people were unsafe being in the environment and, and suddenly that was taken away. So I, I hope that things are able to come back soon. Um, and I know that people are, are booking tours now um, that are happening for the fall, but like, I'm not, I'm not convinced. Yeah. yeah I know. I know you guys rescheduled and then canceled and then, all of that like twice or three times your headline yes. tour it seemed like it got to I don't know I want to speak for you but it got to a point it seemed like where you're just like okay let's stop pushing this you know a few months down the road let's just figure it out when we 100% know we can do it is that kind of what was going through your head eventually yeah totally I mean uh, and also at one point we looked at, we looked at the calendar and the shows were going to be happening one year later than they were supposed to, uh, you know, and, and that wasn't even able to happen. And it was like promoters and venues are holding people's money for over one year. Like at that point, people should, you know, not that like, not that the tickets were a ton of money, but people should theoretically be earning interest <laughs> at that, at that <laughs> point. So um, yeah. So it was just a, a cancel and, and start over. Um, you guys are on some festivals this summer. Um, what does it feel like to prepare for those? Um, I, I will let you know the moment I begin preparing for those. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just strange, like trying to, the, one of the things that people don't consider is just like the length of like booking, uh, booking something or uh, playing a festival, right? There's like this like long lead time to it. And there was this lack of certainty as to when we were even gonna be able to get shots for a while. Um, so everything on the calendar for us is, is there, I think there's one thing in August and then there's a couple things in September, but it's nice that like the outdoor things are, uh, it, it seems like those are definitely going to happen. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's still, I, I don't know. It's, it's definitely still up in the air to, to me. It does seem like there's this like fine line of like, um, you know, maybe where the, where the danger lies or the case count or something where ev everything on this side is like, you need to shut everything down. And then you cross back this much. And it's like, people get sick all the time. It's just one of those things. That, and like, we accept it. And that, yeah. that's, just going to be interesting to me in the, in the fall is like, I think inevitably, like it's shown some level of seasonality, like the cases are going to go up. There'll be variants of variants of variants that chip away at the vaccine efficacy. And then you yeah. know, what's, what's the level of, uh, of, I want to see a concert versus, uh, I want to be safe. Last year we did talk during the summer. Now that I, now that I think about it, I was very optimistic about things before I should have been. And you were like, no, what's going to happen is cases. They're going to go down a little bit and then they're going to go way back up and then down. You're like, it's going to happen. A lot. I was like, no, <laughs> well, <laughs> it won't happen. Um, I was very sorry. Wrong. Right. You were very right again. Yeah. Every day I feel like people learn, like we, we have like known things about the virus the entire time, but, but everything has just been a guess, right. Or like science's best guess. 
And now there's actually, I think we're far enough along to know, to like actually know things like outdoor transmission is pretty unlikely in, in general, you know, and that's something where people were like people in my neighborhood who were out for a walk. A lot of them were wearing masks the whole time, like by themselves. And um, like that probably was, was not necessary. Um, and things like surface transmission, like, I was absolutely wiping down all of my groceries with Lysol wipes until I got vaccinated. Um, and again, it turns out that it looks like surface transmission is not really a, a thing with the virus, but um, it's just, it's, it's frustrating. And I, I think that gets uh, back to like the, um, the division in people's like level of certainty with things of people are really, they really hate like it having like having to change their mind or admitting that they have changed their mind so when they're told something about like um well I, you know everyone should wear a mask all the time then it's like well in these situations like you might not need to it's like it's like no 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 i know that i need to wear a mask and then on the other end uh you know being told early on that masks don't work and if we all wash our hands we'll be okay and then the exact inverse of that being true again it like takes a while to and also to get over those things, like for yourself, like I was still wiping down my groceries for a minute after they were like, you don't have to wipe down your groceries. There's no virus on there. Yeah. Oh, I was so excited when they said that. I was like, I'm sick of doing this. Yeah. It added <laughs> so, so much yes. time to putting the groceries away, you know, I just want, I just want to go buy food. Well, I'm excited to, you know, at least see you guys on some festivals. We're giving away a trip actually to Riot Fest. Um, so whoever wins our trip, we'll see you there. Um, that that's, that's really awesome. I had an idea to, uh, don't, don't steal this from me, but, uh, you know how there, there's these things, the contests like that, where like, uh, we want to send you to riot fest in Chicago. Right. I, I wanted to do one that was like, uh, joy wave wants to send you to the Staples center in Los Angeles to see Billie Eilish. <laughs> like, just like, just like give the people like. Just be like, I, I know what you want. And it's not a joy <laughs> concert. We've got something way better for you. <laughs> well, yeah, again, congrats on the EP. You guys, um, I assume you, since you had just said you guys had spend a lot of time together, did you record any of it together? Um, or is we, it mostly virtual? It, it's mostly virtual. Um, the Paul, our drummer and I were able to get together for a few days early on to track drums. The, um, the studio's at, my house now so that was easy for me um and his living situation and my living situation allowed us to quarantine successfully to get together for a minute um the other guys couldn't because of their situations so there was some stuff that happened um on zoom where like me and joey the guitar player would go back and forth and he would send me a, a we did this thing called reamping that is either might be really exciting or really boring um depending on your interest in recording technology but Basically, uh, he would record his guitar directly into the computer, then send me the file, and I would connect my computer through Pro Tools to the amplifier in the studio, where basically the computer plays back the take um, long distance, which is kind of crazy that that was necessary, but um, actually pretty exciting, too, because it adds an extra gain stage. Like, you can control how loud the guitar is, where, like, historically, the guitar is just however loud that guitar is going into the amp so it's kind of fun yeah that's good i mean it's kind of amazing that you know obviously none of us wanted this but that it happened at this time that musicians like you can do that we well, mentioned music last year a lot of collaborations happened i just imagine because everybody was you know at home making their own music and all they had to do was send over a piece to somebody else so we yeah, did see a and, lot of that yeah and one of the first things that i did was a uh like a side project with my friend Jason from Sir Sly called Best Friends that I, I think you guys played Ugly Ending a few times. Um, yep. But we did uh, we did that where it was just, we had talked about maybe working on something together for a while. We had, um, we produced a track for Dreamers together like two years ago that um, uh, True Crime that we, that was kind of the genesis where we were like, we, we work really well together, but you know, we're both so busy with our artist careers. So we were able to do that virtually. And that was kind of like our new record is definitely not a quarantine record or a pandemic record. Um, but instead we made best friends that very deliberately. So to kind of take a snapshot of this, 
this moment of, of society to, and also like to get that out of the system kind of, and be able to go on and, and make the next joy wave record. Yeah. I, I didn't want to like spend so much time talking about the last year, but it's hard not to, but I, you're right. We do need to like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> no, no, I brought it up every time. Um, yeah. I told myself though, like, let's you know move past the pandemic we don't talk about let's talk about i keep asking about it i mean it's hard it's hard yeah 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 Um, well i i mean i mean i i what do i spend all day thinking about right case counts and mutations so well i i also wanted to know um is there anything specific that you missed from touring that you like never thought you would is there anything weirdly specific like um like gas station food or (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> things that you uh, okay, might so, have found annoying but miss yeah so so that that was actually something that entered the the lyrical sphere for this new record is just this appreciation of like i like i like traveling i don't like flying um i don't like waking up at like 4 a.m to go to the airport and sometimes you get in these segments of a cycle where it's like okay i have to fly from seattle to jacksonville to la to philadelphia to portland and and you're like playing shows the whole time and you're just like this is terrible like i'm i'm it's nice to be in different places um but in the moment you're really not able to appreciate it and there's also never a moment to slow down and be like wow i'm really glad that i had that amazing coffee in colorado springs last week um, so I, I do miss like finding a good solid, uh, solid oat or almond latte in the morning. Um, but I, I kind of did miss, like, we, we were in Europe when COVID broke out, which I, I'm sure we talked about last time, but, um, in, in February of 2020, we were in Europe and, um, I did not have an excellent time. Like I, I was kind of like o- over there, like you kind of need to do things in a van to make some of the economic things work. And I I was just like miserable. And I was taking Dramamine to like not throw up all day. I would time it out. So it would wear off right when I was going on stage and I'd start to feel like a person again. Um, And I was kind of like, this is, this is really miserable. And, but then once I was back home and I didn't have to like get back on planes and, and start zigzagging again, I was able to finally appreciate that and be like, I get to do this amazing thing. And like the thing that I love more than anything, like creating out of nothing is the thing that has brought me these unique life experiences. And if it means that like, I didn't get enough sleep last night or something, that's fine. Like, that's totally fine. That's the, like, the lowest price to pay for the things that I get to experience. And that is something that like, I wish we had had more time previously because I think if I'd been able to slow down, I would have appreciated it sooner. Um, And I know it sounds stupid to be like, I'm in Paris today or Berlin and it sucks. (laughs) But, but like just the, what your body is telling you in the moment or like, I'm i I'm lactose intolerant. So it's always like, I have to somehow communicate with these French people who hate my guts and tell them that I can't eat their dairy food and also find one of them that is compassionate enough to forgive me for being American and then accommodate my dairy allergy. And then that like turns into this ball of anxiety where I'm, I'm like, why don't you know, why can't I just go home or like eat a granola bar or something? So that, so all of that, I started to, um, to appreciate, which is cool. And I hope that as things pick back up in whatever year that is, uh, that I'm continue that I'm able to still have that mindset going forward, um, and to not, you know, be sad that I'm tired. Yeah, I agree. Um, I do think as humans, though, unfortunately, we get tired of stuff real quick. Right, and then and that's we, like the realest thing to you. We won't learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like I, I doubt all of existence and the entire universe, except for the fact that I'm hungry. Right. Like you, you set aside everything. You're like only hunger is real. Yeah. Yeah. It is funny. Yeah. Last year at this time, it was all, you know, the, the rhetoric was 
we all love each other. We're all in this together. You know, help your neighbor. No, we and weren't. now we're like, <laughs> nope, I hate you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that lasted for uh, like 24 hours and then it was uh, it, the, the branches started forming. I, oh my God, um, I'll let you go. <laughs> I've had you for like 30 minutes. But oh, I don't, I don't have to be anywhere till September. Till September. Oh my, okay, we got plenty no, of time. No. <laughs> um, congrats on the new release. G- okay, so clarify this this is the ep today and then yes. but your fourth album is coming still and it's right called, yep and it's it's okay. called cleanse basically it's just, this is just four songs arriving early um okay. to tide people over more or less but these these four songs will be on the record that will come out hopefully early next year okay awesome well i'm excited about that one more thing i want to ask you um we have a standing uh, show in 2024 with you. At oh, the yes. Black yep. Christmas yep. show. Um, what do you think 2024 the world is going to be like? We can go um, funny or serious about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. People will be wearing pants on their heads. Um, no, uh, there will still be COVID. Maybe by that time, it'll have a different number after it. We'll be done with 19. Um, it'll be less less dangerous. I don't, I don't think things will ever be how they, how they were before, but I think they'll be better than right now. And certainly, certainly better than 2020. And anytime that joy wave is at the black sheep for a Christmas show, uh, everything's fine. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been awesome catching up with you. And again, congrats on the new EP. Everybody should go listen to it. Um, and we'll talk to you soon. Hopefully. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for playing the song. Appreciate it. Of course. All right. Bye. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.